Hey everybody, Ben here for the Bono Podcast and welcome to Star Player Spotlight, Scrog Snowpelt. So Scrog is a new star player that's landing as part of the Spike 14 and Norse releases. And he is the most flamboyant big guy that we have seen yet. The dude even comes armed with a hairbrush as part of the model. Really interesting design choice from Games Workshop. But we are going to have a look today at how much he costs, who he can play for, what does he do, what his special power is and why you would run him. Okay, so let's have a look at the rules for Scrog. So Scrog Snowbelt comes in at 250k. So that's 110k more than a Yeti. Let's start with the stats. Movement 5, Strength 5, Edge 4+, Passing nothing, Armor 9+, is exactly the same as the rostered yeti for the norse team so let's have a look at the skills claws that's what yetis have disturbing presence that is also what yetis have loan of four plus that is what yetis have but the similarities end there so yetis normally have frenzy okay it means they take a block they follow up they block again this guy does not have frenzy what he does have is juggernaut now that's a really interesting combination here because normally you'd want Frenzy, Juggernaut, they work really well together. If you're blitzing with a Frenzy piece, you get to turn those both down into a push, and that's going to enable you to follow up and make another block with Frenzy. Scrog Snowpelt is too chilled for that. He doesn't have Frenzy. You are going to get a combat skill only if you blitz, and you're going to miss the benefit of that follow-up block from Frenzy. But he's also got Mighty Blow, which is really interesting. So Claws and Mighty Blow no longer work together in concert. Um, if you knock a dude down when you've got Claws and you roll an 8 plus on armor, it will always break their armor unless they have the Iron Hard skill, uh, Iron Hard armor skill. So Claws basically is great in that regard. Mighty Blow used to in the old edition stack. So you could roll the dice, add plus one if the result was eight. That is not the case anymore. Basically, if you've got Mighty Blow and Claws, Claws allows you to break the armor. Fantastic. Mighty Blow, if you break the arm using Claws, then transfers over to the Injury Roll. Um, and that's actually still really powerful. It's not as powerful as it used to be, but actually it is still really, really good as far as removal goes. And we're also missing Unchanneled Fury here from a Yeti point of view. So Unchanneled Fury is the skill that you have to... It's a Nega trait, basically, that if you want to move, you have to roll a 4+. plus. If you want to blitz or block, you have to roll a 2+. plus. If you roll a 1 or a 1, 2, 3, if you're trying to move, he just stands there and stares into space. Doesn't lose his tackle zone, just loses his activation. So the great thing about Scrog is that you've got Claws and Mighty Blow. So you've got two of those removal armor-piercing abilities, basically. And he does have a combat skill in Juggernaut. It's just those things that make Juggernaut and Blitzing a really good thing... <laughs> aren't there so this guy having juggernaut is a really useless skill every now and again you're going to blitz with him and it's going to come in handy but you're going to be better off blitzing with an ulf or with uh with a proper yeti now 250k puts this guy in the same literally the same price region as something like grack and crumbleberry now grack and crumbleberry is an ogre that can kick stuff and a halfling with sure hands like that comes as a package deal this guy is just one yeti but he is a yeti and he is a yeti with mighty blow and claws does have loan of four plus doesn't really have a combat skill unless you're blitzing with him and doesn't come with frenzy now this is from the star player card so it is entirely possible that actually that's a typo or something but I don't know. I would really want this guy to have Frenzy to make the most of Juggernaut or to have uh, Unchanneled Fury so that at least you're encouraged to Blitz and therefore make the most of Juggernaut. He doesn't have any of that, however, but what he does have is a special ability called Pump Up the Crowd. And basically, the Pump Up the Crowd ability is a once per game effect. If Scrog makes a block and causes a casualty, well, actually, it's if a casualty is caused as the result of a block action by Scrog, you get a reroll. But that reroll is only in effect until the end of the drive. It's not even for the rest of the half. It's not even for the rest of the game. It is once per game. If he causes a casualty, you get a reroll for the rest of that drive. So if it is a, if you're about to score, nothing. If they're about to score, nothing. So. 
when we look at Scrog, we look at what he's actually going to bring to the party. 250k for a star player is a huge amount. 280k you get Griff, which is one of the top three star players in the game currently. 250k here, there's a whole bunch of meatheads you can buy in that price range. You've got Zug, who's got Block. You've got Crack and Crumbleberry, who's... And Crumbleberry, right? You've got a full-on bonehead dude plus a dude with sure hands. Okay, that's two players for 250. If you want to be disappointed by a big guy in that price range, you can take Frankenstein and just find him a little bit lackluster. Scrog is a strong piece of removal doesn't it just is absolutely lacking that bit of punch if he had frenzy or a better combat skill than juggernaut well actually pretty good now do not get me wrong claws and mighty blow are going to be really good and scrog is going to be a great pickup to have if you are punching up against a team with good armor if you're running a norse team or whatever and you've got a yeti you can take Scrog as well, and then you've got two Claws pieces. So Scrog is not a star player to build your team around, but he is a toolkit piece for high strength removal when you need it. This is league play territory. Scrog is going to be awesome when you are playing that 1400 Chaos team, and you've got your team, and actually 250k, this guy, and a wizard, is going to level that playing field. Although, would you? Well, I'd probably rather take a giant because, well, I love giants. Anyway, Scrog, lot of removal abilities. Uh, pump up the crowd's going to come in every now and again. I don't know. So let's have a look at the teams that can take Scrog and kind of muse about whether or not they would. Okay, so Scrog is an old world classic star player, which means dwarf, halfling, human, imperial nobility, ogre. Old World Alliance, and now with Spike 14, Norse teams can take Scrog. So like I said, Mighty Blow and Claw for 250 with Strength 5 gives you a solid big guy. Okay, there is an inflated price there at 250 versus, for example, 160, which would be a, a Yeti with Juggernaut. But actually, to get that star player thing is kind of what you're looking for. So, a Dwarf team. Are they likely to need Scrog? Actually, they don't get... They don't get access to claws. So if they are punching up, if they need... If a dwarf team needs help murdering stuff, then actually Scrog is going to be a reasonably good choice. Taking Griff might be slightly better value, but actually if this is combat they're after, then Scrog is going to fill that gap. Halflings, humans, Imperial Nobility, Ogres, Old World Alliance. This is just more muscle. An Ogre team running Scrog would be a really interesting one because you've just got high value murder everywhere and you can kind of probably induce another ogre to go to your team that might work out better but again claws none of these teams with the exception of the norse team there get natural access to claws and that is basically the selling point here 250k is a lot but when it comes to league inducements 250k is free money there's basically nothing you can get that's going to help your team in the long run so if you're playing to pile on the pressure to equal the balance when it comes to removal then Dwarves, Halflings, Humans, Nobility, Old World Alliance and Ogre teams having access to a Claw player is going to be great. And when it comes to Norse, okay fine, at that value you can take Griff, basically you could take Hackflem, you can take a Wizard. What you can do here is two Yetis, two Strength 5 pieces, line them up with your two Old Warriors, and you've just got a bunch of Bash. So actually I can see him being taken even more by looking at the kind of teams that might want him. Because these teams do not get any other access to this much removal power. It's very expensive at 250. And you're going to kind of question whether or not it's going to do enough to get, you know, to, to equal that gap. But you only need a couple of solid hits with Mighty Blow and Claw to get a solid couple of pieces of removal. And that can be all the difference in a game. Okay, so you caved in and decided that Claws and Mighty Blow, despite not being as good as they were in the old edition, are still pretty potent. And actually having access to a quarter of a million gold means you can take a Strength 5 dude with the, those abilities to help level the playing field is worth it. What can you use for a model? So the cool thing here is that, quite frankly, any big Yeti dude will do. And there's a ton of great Yeti models out there. Not as many as there are great Minotaur models, but... There's still a ton of great models that you could use to represent this player. But there is a Forge World model, and this is probably one of the few occasions where I'm going to say that I like this model better than almost every alternative. So, Forge World, normally quite expensive. This guy is, and please 
be gentle with the sentence that I'm about to utter, is only 25.50. Now normally when I look at big players, strength 5 and above, I'm preparing myself at 35.40 pounds from Forge World. So the fact that he's only a few pounds extra more than a standard 32 mil guy actually is pretty cool. You're still looking at £30 with postage, basically, though. So this is a big investment for a model. But I actually really like it. And not only do I like it, this is the kind of Yeti that I would probably run and will be running as my Yeti for my Norse team. Because it's got so much character. It's such a fun sculpt. I reckon it's been sculpted by Windsor Chog, uh, like, you know. It's just got that cartoony vibe about it. Now, it might be too cartoony for some people, but Blood Bowl kind of has that hybrid of seriousness and death and violence, but also cartoony elements to it that I actually really quite like. Now, this model, when it landed, I was quite, like, surprised. I was like, this is this is interesting. This is very characterful. This actually looks like the Abominable Snowman from a Disney movie um, that my wife pointed out. But it's awesome like it is awesome now you can paint it as a white yeti you can paint it as a kind of you could do it as like a brown scheme and have like a a, 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 um, a bigfoot vibe which is probably where i will go because he just reminds me of the jim is it jim henson bigfoot thing i can't remember what it was called that tv show oh i haven't thought about that tv show for years but that's the kind of vibe i get from this so scrog snow pelt the model you can use any yeti and when it comes to running a Norse team, you're probably only going to be able to afford one Yeti. So having this model instead of the other standard Yeti is probably fine because he's going to get to the pitch a lot. I love the model. I love the model. Okay, so Scrog is 250 for stuff. Not a huge amount. This guy is not an A-tier star player. He is a toolkit star player. So if I was going to give him a grade, it would probably be about a C plus or a B minus. He is going to give you options and he is going to provide muscle. He is not going to provide as much muscle and as much options as some of the other star players in a very similar price range. And at 250, he's probably going to price himself out of a lot of tournament appearances. But the model's cool. The theme is cool. And actually being able to buy Claws of Mighty Blow and the amount of teams that are accessible now is actually really good, I think, for for Blood Bowl just to have that action. I think you'll see the model a lot. I don't think you'll see the star player a lot, but it's a model-based game, so I'm all right with that. Let me know what you think of Scrog in the comments because I want to know what you think of the model and what you think of his rules. He's no Gretchen, I'll give you that. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to help support the channel even further, please like and subscribe or come join us on our Patreon. We have early access to content. We get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can. Or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.